Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. Our hearts in true devotion bow. Thy Spirit send with grace divine. Our service now begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that you have called us to be your children, and that you have given us the Holy Spirit to make us your own. We pray that you would continue to call servants to serve you in appropriate callings, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lutheran Radio Choir will sing hymn 512, O Christ, our true and only light. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us, and for his sake he forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. The first reading is from the third chapter of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. 
the Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh. By the decree of the king of his nobles, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows, God may yet relent with his compassion and turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. This is the word of the Lord. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat and the hired servants and followed him. Here ends our reading. Let us confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. After the choir sings hymn 421, Come, Follow Me, the Savior Spake, Pastor Thomas Schmidt will speak on the theme, Listen, God is Calling. Oh, 
Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We heard several accounts of God calling men into the holy ministry in today's reading. The Old Testament reading is the account of God calling Jonah to serve the people of Nineveh, and the Gospel is the account of Jesus calling four of his disciples to become fishers of men. The reading from Jonah is part of a much longer account of God working with a very reluctant prophet. When God originally called Jonah to go to Nineveh, he ran away. You see, Israel and Assyria were bitter enemies. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. Jonah hated the Assyrians, and he did not want them to hear the word of God. He did not want them to come to faith. If the Holy Spirit worked faith in them, then God would forgive them. That was the last thing Jonah wanted because he hated the Assyrians. So Jonah literally booked passage on a ship that would take him as far from Nineveh as possible in the world that he knew. He literally attempted to do the exact opposite of God's call to him so that the people of Nineveh would die in their sins and go to hell. That's how much Jonah hated the Assyrians. Of course, God intervened. He allowed a major storm to threaten the well-being of the ship. Jonah was so intent on avoiding the people of Nineveh that he convinced the sailors to throw him overboard into the stormy seas. He knew that God was angry with him, and he thought that if he drowned in the sea, God would no longer need to punish the ship. Sure enough, when the sailors threw Jonah into the sea, the storm calmed and the sailors were able to continue their journey in safety, only without Jonah. However, instead of drowning in the sea, God sent a great fish to carry Jonah back to the eastern shores of the Mediterranean. Many people know this account as the story of Jonah and the whale, but the Bible actually states that it was just a giant fish that swallowed Jonah and carried him back to the east. However, when the fish got to the eastern shores of the Mediterranean, it took Jonah right back where God wanted him. So there's Jonah on the eastern shores of the Mediterranean, covered in fish vomit, and God called him again. You think he was angry before? Ho, 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 now he's even more angry. So what's an angry prophet supposed to do? How do you fight a God that can, that can even keep you from drowning by sending a giant fish, and then sends a giant fish as your own taxi back to the shores? And as we heard this morning, Jonah went to Nineveh, and he preached God's judgment to them. The Holy Spirit worked through the message that God gave to Jonah. The people in Nineveh repented, and God forgave them. So you and I can learn a lot from Jonah. First of all, God has called prophets, he's called apostles, pastors, he's called teachers, and guess what? They're sinners, just like everyone else. Second of all, the most hateful thing any servant of God can do is keep God's word to himself. Jonah hated the Assyrians, and he determined not to share God's message with them. Finally, we learn that God's message is a blessing to us, even when the messenger is not. The message of God was a blessing of forgiveness, even in the hateful mouth of Jonah. Just as he had called Jonah to proclaim his message to Nineveh, Jesus also called men to witness the saving work of his perfect life, his sacrificial death, and his resurrection from the dead. Not only were these men called to witness this work, but they were also called to proclaim this work to the world. As Jesus preached, he also called other disciples to follow him. As we heard, passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. These four men and the others that Jesus chose were not full of hatred like Jonah, but they all had their weaknesses. As we follow Jesus in his ministry, we will see these men fail again and again, but Jesus will teach them, even though they often fail to understand what Jesus said. While Jesus will proclaim the kingdom of God, 
they will argue among themselves about who is the greatest. They will walk with, eat with, and hear God in the flesh, but they will focus on their own concerns instead. Nevertheless, they will be the ones who proclaim God's kingdom after Jesus ascended back to the Father. Once again, we learn God's called prophets, apostles, pastors, teachers, are sinners just like everyone else. In fact, it seems as, go as though God goes out of his way to choose the people most unlikely to be those candidates who would proclaim his message. The Lord said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My, made, my power is made perfect in your weakness. It is the message, not the messenger, who is important. Martin Luther said after the Reformation got underway, I did nothing. The word did everything. Nothing has really changed over the centuries. God still calls the most unlikely men to proclaim his kingdom. We are weak and frail with enormous faults. Matthew Harrison, who was recently elected the president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod said, upon his election, congratulations. You have kept your perfect record of electing sinners as president of the Missouri Synod. So how can God take sinful, wounded men and women and make them bearers of eternal life? Well, if he created a special kind of person for the ministry, could you relate to your pastor or he relate to you? You see, we share a life of up and down, of questions, doubts, and fears, indeed a life of sin. But we share something greater than all those things. We share the message of eternal life. Remember what Jesus proclaimed? The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The fulfillment of all things was right there present in him. In this one man came the kingdom of God, not distant and unapproachable, but crashing in on them and subsequently on us. Here was God himself who had become a man. Here was God who bore all our human woes and fears and pain. Have you been crushed with guilt, pain, or sorrow? Look to Jesus. He knows you and he bears it with you and he bears it for you. This is why he gives people pastors. When God seems distant, here is a man who shares your humanity and speaks for the one who has redeemed the world, including you. He stands in the place of Christ, bringing the ear of Christ in confession and the heart of Christ in absolution. Do you fear death? Look to Jesus. He has already been there, and he has some great news for you. He is the one who has entered death, even death on the cross. He has borne all the guilt of sin for you and every other sinner, shedding his holy and precious blood in your place. Yet death could not hold him. On Easter morning, he rose, destroying the power of sin, death, and hell. And this he proclaimed to you when a pastor, a fisher of men, poured water upon you in his name, and you became one with Jesus in death and resurrection. Go to Christ's altar. There the pastor will place the very body and blood of Jesus Christ into your hand, the very body and blood of Jesus given and shed for you. Here you will receive a meal of forgiveness, life, and hope. Here is a foretaste of the marriage feast of the Lamb. Here is the kingdom of God, not distant, not somewhere far away and somewhere lost in time, but right here and now. Come broken, leave whole. Come burdened, leave free. Come and see and taste the kingdom of God. God called Jonah to minister to a congregation that Jonah hated. In spite of the hatred that Jonah had for Nineveh, God still worked repentance in that city and the people of Nineveh received the forgiveness of sins. In spite of the failures of the apostles, Christ still sent them to proclaim repentance and the forgiveness of sins in his name and the word of the Lord grew. He made them into fishers of men. God still calls sinful men into the ministry today. In spite of all their shortcomings, the Christ, they proclaim, still forgives sins and proclaims eternal life through their mouths. Their hands still give out the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. It is not them, but the message of Jesus that they proclaim that is important. The time has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Listen, 
God is calling. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray for the Church of God that hearing both law and gospel, we would repent of our sins and believe in the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray for all ministers that they would carry out their work diligently and faithfully. We pray for those who are oppressed by the devil and evil works, those who suffer from depression, doubt, and disease, that God would free them from their bondage and comfort them with his grace. We pray for all who are sick or hospitalized, that God would strengthen and heal those whom he will and give courage and support to those who are near their end of life in this world. We pray for those who are homebound and alone, that God would comfort them with his holy word and that those who visit them would support and encourage them with God's love and grace. Heavenly Father, we pray for the right use of the sacraments amongst us, that God would edify us daily by returning us to the waters of holy baptism, grant us forgiveness and confession and absolution, and strengthen our faith with the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord in his holy supper. For all disciples and followers of Jesus Christ, that God would make us his faithful people, going where he would have us go and doing the work that we are to do. For all who seek the work of the kingdom of God, especially the students who are studying to be pastors, that God would bless their studies and their work. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. As we celebrate 90 years of broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'd love to send you a special free gift from our ministry to your home. As always, you can receive a copy of today's sermon. All you need to do is simply write to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. You may also call our Radio Church office at 414-462-9900. You've been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, pre-recorded at Trinity Lutheran Church in Freistadt, Wisconsin. Today's music was provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Trudy Schmaltz. The message, Listen, God is Calling, was given by Pastor Thomas Schmidt of St. John's Lutheran Church of Glendale, who has had the blessing of serving as your liturgist today. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now close this service with hymn 518, If Thou But Suffer God to Guide Thee.
preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. Prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.